Hello my friends, welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. We are painting a winter scene right now, I just have not decided what color we're going to be using. So this is primarily going to be either a blue or a green, or maybe we should just do a mix of both. But I have started with my piece of paper in a portrait position with the borders taped. Uh, so that we have a nice clean and crisp border at the end of our painting. And I should have thought about what I'm actually going to do before hitting record. But I think we are going to start with green and then we can also always add blue to it. But what we want to do, I'm going to quickly, gosh, I haven't used this one in a while, my size 14. I'm just using this, I could also use my mop brush, but you just want a bigger brush so that it's easier to cover your piece of paper. And, um, I mean, you can create your horizon line wherever you want, really. You could go halfway, a little above halfway, a little below halfway. I think I'll just do somewhere like halfway. If you've watched my tutorials for a long time, you will recall me complaining about these little specks of dust that collect on my paintbrushes when I haven't used them in a long time. And then they, they come onto the paper when I paint and it's very annoying. The other thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of pigment, tiny bit of green just so that I can see what I've painted because when we're just using water it sometimes is a little bit difficult to see what we've actually painted and because we are going to be um, painting this mostly green anyways um, it won't matter that it's slightly tilt uh, tinted green so once you've covered that whole area in like a tinted color, because we're doing wet, wet on wet for this particular. By the way, like a lot of people ask me in the comments of videos, oh, are you, are you using, like, did you put on water on the paper first? And if I didn't say that I've done that, then I haven't. Uh, I just... I'm, not gonna go back and rewatch a 40 minute tutorial that I filmed two years ago to see if I said put water on it or not. So if I didn't say it, then it's I'm painting on dry paper. And if I did say it like now, then it's wet on wet. So I am just switching back to my size eight by Grumbacher. And we are going to, you wanna work kind of quickly here. If you have cotton paper, you have a little bit more time, but if you have um, a cheaper quality paper, which is fine, um, you just have to work a bit quicker because it dries, um, like your background will dry before you get a chance to do what we're doing. So I am going to kind of lift my piece of paper to allow my pigment to flow downward. So I've picked up green and I'm just applying it to the base of where my wet area starts. Um, you might have to help it along a little bit and you can even do that by applying some more water to the base don't go crazy with the water, obviously. You don't wanna um, create a swamp. But you do want it to fade out, like it's kind of doing here. And you can try using different greens if you wish to vary, vary it up a little bit. Um, Gosh, I haven't painted in so long. That's not true. I mean, I painted two weeks ago. So for full disclosure here, so I don't get confused and you don't get confused. Um, it is currently November that I'm painting this and I painted two weeks ago for the first time in months. 
ever after giving birth to our daughter. Um, and those tutorials were supposed to be released in January. But because they were kind of Christmas themed, I switched up some of my tutorials and I moved some of them. I, I released those uh, in November this past week and some of my um, the ones that were supposed to be released last week I moved to January which won't make sense because they're kind of fall summery themed but I am feeling the YouTube pressure to um, get on the holiday tutorials whoops so I just um, I'm picking up some blue now. Oh, that's really annoying. Do, 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 do. I do want a straight horizon line, which is why I'm kind of fixing this. You totally could just put a piece of tape there and avoid this whole issue because now it doesn't look as natural as I wanted it to look. Also, this looks like a spaceship at the top and not a tree. Did I say that we're trying to make these look like pine trees? <laughs> I don't know if I said that or not, but that's the intention. Like we want to create this background of um, faded out trees so that there's a little bit of color to go off of. But now that I look at this, I'm really not a fan of this bright blue. Uh, I want it to be like a darker I'm working with two palettes here too so this is making it extra confusing but and the reason why I have two palettes is because I'm using the grabby paints that I really like but the palette itself does not have a mixing tray, so I have to use my old mixing tray. So I'm getting really confused with the paints, like which one to grab from. Anyway, you can keep going. I've seen people use like the spritz method where they, they tilt their piece of paper upwards and then they kind of spritz water onto it to help it run downwards. You can totally do that. I haven't tried that ever because I don't have a spare spritz bottle. And I never remember to pick one up, but I think I am okay with this background because, yeah, it is what it is. So what I'm going to do now, this bottom portion is going to be snow. We want it to resemble snow at least. Um, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of gray. And I'm gonna water that gray down quite a bit. Uh, in fact, we can mix a little bit of blue in with that gray, but water it down like a lot. You can always add color, but it's not as easy to get rid of it. And we can paint on like little wisps. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm picking up that very watered down color. I am holding my paintbrush horizontally to the paper and starting from one edge and kind of flicking my my paintbrush. And it doesn't have to be any which way. Like I just, you can even just go like this, kind of like a staircase with your paintbrush. Just put something on there so it's not just the, the bare white paper. Um, You can leave it white, there's nothing stopping you. But I prefer not to. Okay, so I was telling a story regarding my tutorials. Um, and I don't really remember what my point was or where I even left off. Yeah, so I filmed two tutorials that were supposed to be released in January, but they were Christmassy, so I released them in November last week. Um, but this one, it is starting to look pretty Christmassy too. However, I'm pretty confident that this one is going to be released in January. 
<clears throat> because every tutorial from now when I'm filming this, which is end of November going forward, is all Christmas, like actually Christmas themed rather than a Christmas scene. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's about, it's mid to end of November right now when I'm filming this. So it is only the third tutorial that I'm filming. If it's released, I don't know if it'll be released in that order, but um, by the way, we're just waiting for this to dry. That's why I'm rambling. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be, it's the third one I'm filming. Might not be the third one that's released after um, giving birth to my daughter, but um, uh, I don't remember what my point was. So we're gonna let this dry, and I'm gonna try to think what I was gonna say. Okay, so this should be dry. I hope. I certainly hope so because we're gonna be painting over it now and I'm gonna pull out, I really need to go through this little tray that I keep all my brushes in because it has a lot of junk and stuff I don't even use in it. Um, so I've just pulled out my double zero brush. I've mentioned in a, an earlier video that I really like this one. Like I've always used my quadruple zero for fine details and I probably still will in this video, but. This one, it's a tiny bit bigger, so I like it a lot more because it holds more water and more pigment, so you don't have to reload your brush as often, which is really handy when you're painting a tiny pine tree and have to make like 50 tiny little brush strokes. So um, anyways, what we're going to be doing now is just painting some more detailed pine trees that are not blurred out over top of our background, above our horizon line, and possibly more below the horizon line, but I haven't really determined if that's what we're going to be doing it. So I'm just picking up some color on my palette here. Uh, just mixing a bunch of greens. So one tip, if you are using like a very small brush, at least I often will take a bigger brush to mix my colors before switching to the smaller brush to actually apply the colors. Otherwise, it would take a very long time to create the color scheme I'm going for here. So anyways, um, I always have to think what technique of, or no, sorry, what I meant to say is typically I don't have to think um, what style of pine tree, what technique I'm going to use painting it. Just kind of comes naturally on the paper, but this one's a bit... I don't really have... Like, the background is just blurry. It's just a blur, so... Um, but I'm using... I've started using this technique a lot on wood slice ornament paintings. Because it, on the wood slice background, for some reason, it looks really, really nice. Like, much nicer than it does on paper. Um, but I'm going to keep practicing it on paper because it's, it, I really do like it. And I'm not going to go over exactly how verbally, how to, exp sorry, I'm not going to verbally explain how I paint this pine tree because I have so many tutorials on pine trees. I have a Skillshare class that features eight techniques to painting pine trees. So you can go check those ones out, free trial, link in the, des in the description. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that. I wanna add a little more black to the screen, make it a little darker more prominent um actually i am going to utilize some blue and paint a nice blue tree next to my green tree fun 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 so the one thing I will say about this particular technique is I like to start with painting just um, 
a very thin line to give myself a guide, a, thi a long, thin vertical line to give myself a guide from which to paint the little pine branches or little wisps. Like so. <clears throat> so on, on a previous video, like one that I filmed after I gave birth to my child, um, somebody commented, and I'm sure they had good intentions, I am sure of it, but they said that the video was not the same quality that all my other videos are. And that I'm that I should get rest and consider refilming it. And I just I read that comment and I laughed initially because I feel like this commenter must not have children. I just thought it was really funny because I like I have a kid now. I can't just magically get a full night of sleep on my own accord like this is this is my life now uh and so i i laughed and yeah i'm sorry if my videos are not the same quality that they were before i thought it was a really nice painting i was quite proud of it but clearly that was not felt by this particular person and perhaps more of you and i'm sorry but um, this is the stage of life that I'm in now. I'm grateful that I can even find the time that my husband is so wonderful with our daughter that I can just take a little bit of time to, um, to to keep painting these for you guys. I, I What I am super, super happy about though is that I pre-filmed the entire 2023 year because yeah, that first month I was not doing, I was not gonna be doing anything. Um, by the way, I am just following, so I'm, where I've painted a background of green, like here, I will paint a green pine tree, and where I've painted blue, I will paint a blue pine tree. And there are, there is a type of, I don't know if it's a species or, um, like I say in most of my videos, I'm not a botanist, but there is a an evergreen that is like a blue tinge. So this is not fantasy. This is not an abnormal, Thing to paint just so just so you know yeah so back to what I was saying um, I thought it was a nice tutorial I, I I know I was yawning a lot in it like I was quite tired in that tutorial but the the content itself like the painting itself was very nice but you know to each their own everyone's got their own opinion and they are free to express it as they wish but today I feel a lot better maybe it's because it's morning so I still have a little bit of energy in me left uh, whereas those other tutorials I filmed in the evening when I was already very tired after having a default of fatigue. Um, but I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know. What I also appreciate I love reading comments that tell me they love hearing me talk. And I don't mean that in a narcissistic way. Because I recognize it might come off that way. Uh, I guess everybody likes hearing themselves talk. But that's not my point. Um, they, A lot of people say they love my banter. Which I 
appreciate because if I didn't talk about random things, these tutorials would get boring real quick because there's a lot of times like right now where I'm repeating the same thing over and over and there's nothing much to say instructionally wise. Um, okay, so <clears throat> back to this content for a moment. I have painted, like you can fill this whole thing in with pine trees, but I'm going to leave some gaps just to add some variety to the painting. Uh, and I'm trying to decide what to do in the foreground here. Like we can either paint some more pine trees to overlap. I was thinking of even painting like deciduous branches coming through in the foreground to make it kind of mis mystical. Or we could do both. Um trying to decide what to do we have a big one coming yeah okay that's what i'm gonna do uh da, da, da. my tree is going to be green yes it is yes it is i'm adding a little bit of black i want it to be a tad bit darker than the background trees we've painted because it is in the foreground we want it to appear closer to the viewer and one of the ways to do that is to darken our pigment um, so I'm going to have mine starting around here, but I'm just going to paint, um, like a very rough vertical line. There we go. So I can already see it's not as dark as I wanted it to be. So I've added a little bit of black. Okay. This side's a little darker than the other one. So one of my goals for 2023, uh, I realize this is probably going to be released in January, so it'll be a new year, but for 2023, it was to make more holiday decor from nature. And I think I've outdone myself this year. Like I, I'm very proud of what I've created. We had, for some reason this year, an abundance of pine cones. Like the pine trees produced pine cones like no other year. And so I made garlands. I made like a centerpiece candle holders. I'm going to make a, possibly a wreath or like a, hanging down thing kind of like a wreath um but yes i have achieved the goal of making more holiday decor from natural materials rather than buying things okay sorry just a pause i have my tree here i want there to be some sort of darker shadow coming off of it because uh i will I don't want it to look like it's floating. So I've just taken some of that original color that we used for this, I'll call it a backsplash. And I've added um, a, a little bit more blue to it. And I'm just kind of wisping out a shadow coming off of it like this. Although that's not even that bit visible. I'm gonna add, okay, that's way too much green. I added a little bit of green, but it turned into something like that maybe even black might darken it something like that that's quite nice i believe okay now to make this truly unique i would like to add some uh deciduous 
branches coming in from the sides perhaps or you can just paint a deciduous tree coming up from here but I think like branches in the foreground will really make this pop so I'm taking black uh, hold on I'm switching taking black I am taking brown So like I've mentioned probably four times in this video already, it is November while I'm filming this and I'm really getting into the whole holiday spirit. Like I'm pretty excited for Christmas time. Um, it's, it's this fall season has gone by so quickly like November is typically such a gloomy month but it's gone by so quickly and I think it's well it's one because I have a child now so that takes up a lot of time but two um I have filled it with making lots of pastries and crafts and doing a lot of things like that if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen all of the pastries and things that I'm making um, I'm giving a lot of treat boxes to, um, my friends and family this year, like baking stuff. And so I've been experimenting and I'm very excited to get, get going on that. So, sorry, I have switched to my size one here. It holds a lot more pigment for the main branch, but I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for the offshoots. So I'm just trying to decide where I should start this branch, um, like where it's gonna come from. I'll have it come from here, the bottom. So I've mixed brown and black. Sorry, I don't even know if I said that, but that's what I've been doing for the last four minutes. Um, and I'm gonna have this branch come in like this. So I just needed it for the main stem uh, and then I've switched to my size double zero here for the offshoots of the branch and you can go as detailed with this as you wish have as many of these guys coming off totally up to you Um, I do want to fix these, I don't know what you call it, when you run paint on dry paper and it kind of doesn't fully paint on, kind of jumps. Something like that. I'm going to have another branch coming diagonally here. Like so. Should we add another one or is that enough? Maybe another one in this corner or here. Just a small one in this corner to balance things out. Like that. Okay, so this is pretty good, I would say. But we are gonna add one more thing that's really going to finish this off. Snow, obviously. Um, so I have my that palette that I really like here, which is fabulous, and I'm 
And uh, the reason why I'm happy about that is because the paints are very opaque, so I don't even need to grab acrylic paint for this part. Um, so I'm using my white watercolor and I'm just tapping my brush against another brush to make it look like it is snowing on my piece of paper. And you're gonna have to keep reloading. I really wanna make it look like it's snowing, not just a wisp here and there, it's snowing. You can even add some yourself. Um, I actually am going to grow, grab my acrylic paint because I want to paint some on the branches here and it's uh, much more opaque obviously because it's acrylic paint. So one moment. Okay, so I've got my acrylic paint but I forgot my piece of aluminum foil. So I'm just grabbing toilet paper. Uh, because I film in my bathroom so this will be just fine okay so I'm taking that acrylic paint and I don't know if I said this already but this is like dollar store acrylic paint so if I can make this work with dollar store stuff then whatever you have is going to be just as good um, what I have mentioned several times when I'm painting snow, but I've never tried it myself, is using a whiteout pen. I think that would be perfect for, um, for times like this, because you're just painting snow onto these really long branches. So I'm doing, I'm just painting it on top of any branch that is even slightly horizontal. I hear my child starting to cry. My husband is wearing her in this um, carrier that we have. And she really likes that carrier. So when she starts crying in that carrier, it means she's hungry. So I have to hurry this up. Finish this tutorial. So that I can feed my child. But yes, I am just outlining with that acrylic paint every branch, not outlining it, but on, you know, applying some paint on top to make it look like snow has fallen. like so and then I do want to add some to my trees like I always find this part tricky is adding the paint to the trees so I'm just going to you know, outline some of them with snow. And then, uh, ooh, I wonder if I, I might regret this. No, that does not really work. <laughs> I don't know what I thought that that was going to do, but it did not do anything. Um, okay, one last thing. Just because I have my acrylic paint here, I might as well utilize it. But I don't know how this is going to work because um, 
um, I need to add water to this. And I'm using paper towel, so it's not gonna mix very well. Let's see what we can do. I'm just redoing that snow. Yeah, that didn't work very well because uh, typically when I mix white acrylic paint with water, I'm doing so on a surface that doesn't absorb it. So let me try again on this piece of plastic. That's better. That's almost too good. So you can just keep tapping that until you're happy with the amount of snowfall that you have on your painting. Mine looks very snowy. So adding deciduous branches with snow on top of them, I think is a good call. It always, adds a very snowy wintry look to your painting because snow on deciduous branches is a lot easier to paint and just create that wintry look than it is on pine trees in my opinion in my experience but um should we add anything else to this i feel like there's something missing but i can't quite put my finger on it but i have to go feed my child this tutorial is 40 minutes long so i'm gonna call it a day you just, last thing is peel your tape off so that you have those nice clean borders. And voila! I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section and I will see you in the next tutorial.